kindly join us as we sing the King of Glory. The King of Glory comes again. Since the beginning of Lent until now, we prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. This morning we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. It was to accomplish this mystery that Jesus entered his own town city of Jerusalem. Therefore, I invite you with all faith, with devotion, we come to commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of Jerusalem for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that we may, by his grace, partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in our Lord's resurrection and in his eternal life. Let us pray. Increase the faith of all of us who place our hope in you, O God. Graciously hear the prayers of all of us who call on you, that we who today hold high these branches which we now bless to hail Christ in his triumph may bear fruit for you by good works accomplished in him, who lives and reigns and forever and ever. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they 
drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a cold tide on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a cold tied at the door out in the open street and they untied it. <clears throat> and those who stood there said to them, where are you, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they had cut off from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to God. My dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us all together go forth in praise.
खड़े रह
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens in my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall sing our response to the psalm. My God, my God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? have surrounded me, a band of the wicked besets me, they tear holes in my hands and in my feet, I can count every one of my
They divided my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O oh Lord, do not stay afar me. My strength make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him descendants of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, who, though he was born in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness, likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Kindly rise as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was the ointment wasted like that? 
for this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. For you always have the poor with you. Whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of his the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And when he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, there prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he said to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out of the to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further away, on the ground, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this chalice from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? 
Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come here against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priests, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about their testimony, they did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the cock crowed, and the servant girl saw him, and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, 
before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd and to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and they led him, led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against his, him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, saying, Ha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran, ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. Kindly kneel.
stand. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the last day, the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut off of the rock and he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus, of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Can you sit for a few reflections? My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus, we've just heard the narration of the Passion of our Lord from the Gospel of Saint Mark. Last year, year A in the liturgical cycle, we heard the narration of the Gospel from Saint Matthew. Next year, 2025, we'll hear the narration of the gospel from St. Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then the cycle carries on. And each evangelist has his own perspective of telling the gospel. All were present there and give it details from which we can put together the real narrative of the passion of our Lord. We just began, we have just entered with this Eucharist Holy Week, the sacred tree room as it were, the three most sacred days of the liturgical year. During the gospel reading, the cantor told us to kneel down. It was a very dramatic moment, a dramatic moment, all too brief, but commemorating the most changing event in the history of mankind. The one event that changed mankind's living, but mankind's meaning of life, mankind's understanding of life after death. Because of our Lord's death, which for which we knelt, you and I are freed from sin. You and I have the right to eternal life. You and I are told how we should live our life according to the gospel. You and I are redeemed as we heard in the second reading of today's Mass. A brief comment on the first reading from Isaiah. If you read it again and remember what you read, it's almost like a description of what happened to our Lord, but written six, seven hundred years before. Really a pen portrait of the passion of our Lord, scourging at the pillar, the beating, the mocking, the crucifixion. We began today's liturgical service with the procession of the palms. With that, we entered Holy Week. The Gospel of Mark, which we read today, is 
very heavily steeped in detail about the passion of our Lord. As a matter of fact, some commentators call Mark's gospel a narrative of the passion with a long introduction. The reason is almost 40%, 37% actually, 37% of the whole gospel of Mark is about our Lord's passion. That's a big amount, you can imagine. So he has concentrated a lot. I would like to take just two small points for our reflection. The first one from the procession, where Jesus sends two of his apostles to say, the master has need of it. And the second reflection again from the gospel, where Jesus sends two of his apostles, go to a man following, carrying a jar, follow him, and then say, the master has need of this room. The master has need of it. God is the creator of mankind. God does not need anything. And yet Jesus tells him to say, the master has need of it. Each of us here present is baptized. Each of us has been immersed on our Lord's passion, death and resurrection. And you and I, I want us to hear the same words. The Master has need of you. Because of our baptism, Jesus needs us as his collaborators, as his fellow worker, as someone who will, with him, build up the kingdom of God, transform society according to the gospel. Wherever you are, whether here in the congregation or the many several thousands who are watching live on TV, the Master has need of you. Jesus needs us to build up his church, needs us to build up a society where truth, love, justice prevails, needs us to help in the redemption of mankind. During this week, a holy week, I invite you, as I invite myself also, to examine what does Jesus need us for? What is Jesus calling us to? What does he want me to do in my family, first of all, to make my family more Christian, more Christ-like, more loving, more truthful, more service-oriented? In the place of work where I am, or the place of study, if I am studying, what does Jesus need of me? What does the Master need of me? In the church, parish, what does the Master need of me? In society, civic society, in the city, in the country, in the world, what is the Master need of me? Pray for that enlightenment, as I will pray for me, to see what the Lord is calling us to. We, together with Jesus, can transform the world we, together with Jesus, can change the world. We, together with Jesus, can make the world a better place, at least in our small ambient. God bless each one of you, and have a holy, sacred, holy week. Having heard the gospel, reflected on it, let us now make our response by saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of body, life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, you raised Jesus from the dead. You exalted him to be Lord of all. 
As we pray in his name for our needs and the needs of the world, we respond, Loving Father, hear our prayer. All together. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. What do you say? Chuck, Chuck. For Pope Francis, all bishops, clergy, and religious, that they may lead us into a deeper understanding of the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord, and that by imitating Christ's obedience and humility, they may bring the good news of the salvation of God to all people. We pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, Father, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that a desire for peace, justice, and freedom will overrule the desire to rule with injustice and oppression. We pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. For those preparing to be received into full communion with the Church, that they may come to the celebration of Easter with a renewal of mind and heart. We pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may find everlasting joy and peace in the Father's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. We pause and call to mind our own personal intentions as well as those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father. Father, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you call us each year to remember your son's entry into Jerusalem and to celebrate his passion, death and resurrection. Hear our prayers. Give us the grace to follow Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit? During the preparation of the gifts, we shall sing hymn number 368, Take and Receive. Hymn number 368.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all people. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that through, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hands. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you hail is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Oswald Gracious, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together. As one family in Christ, one family in faith, let us pray to our Heavenly Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Allow Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Hymn number 476, Gift of Finest Wheat. Hymn number 476.
Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit for the announcements. Announcements. Today is Palm Sunday. Kindly refer to the notice board or the parish website for the Holy Week services schedule. Lenten confessions will be held from 25th to 27th March from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. and from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. The fathers will also be available for confession on request at other times. Please note, due to Lenten confessions in the cathedral, there will be no prayer meeting this Tuesday, 26th March. The Navina to the Divine Mercy commences on Good Friday, 29th March, and will be recited in the cathedral after the three hours agony service at, the, at 3 p.m. The daily Navina prayer can be said in your homes each day at 3 p.m till Divine Mercy Sunday. Masses on Easter Sunday, 31st March, will be as follows. In Konkani at 7 a.m., 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. in English. There will be no evening Masses on Easter Sunday. The parish office will be closed on Monday, 29th March, for Holi, and on 28th and 29th March, that is, on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. Application forms for those who wish to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation in March 2025 are available in the parish office. Anyone who has completed the 10th Standard Board examination or is above the age of 15 is eligible. The last date for submitting the application form is 31st May 2024, and classes will commence from 9th June 2024. From 1st April, all church services will be held in the school hall. The PPC meeting will be held on Monday, 1st April at 7 p.m. in the Cathedral House Parlor. Community Masses for the blessing of holy water used for the Easter house blessing will be celebrated at 7.15 p.m. as follows. Tuesday, April 2nd, Community 8 in the conference room and Community 2 in the school hall. Wednesday, April 3rd, Community 7 in the conference room and Community 4 in the school hall. Thursday, April 4th, Community 5 in the conference room and Community 9 in the school hall. Monday, April 8th, Community 1 in the school hall. Tuesday, April 9th, Community 3 in the conference room and Community 6 in the school hall. Details of this are also published in the Easter issue of the Holy Name Record. The school lift will be available for those who are attending the Mass in the conference room and are unable to use the stairs. Last Sunday's collection amounted to 
42,041 rupees. Box collection amounted to 15,082 rupees. Church rupees box collection amounted to 30,750 rupees. We thank you for your generosity. We have the Jubilee prayer together, shall we say it? Father in heaven, may the faith you've given us in your son, Jesus Christ, our brother, and the flame of charity enkindled in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, reawaken in us the blessed hope for the coming of your kingdom. May your grace transform us into tireless cultivators of the seeds of the gospel. May those seeds transform from within both humanity and the whole cosmos in the sure expectation of a new heaven and a new earth when with the powers of evil vanquished your glory will shine eternally may the grace of the jubilee reawaken in us pilgrims of hope for yearning for the treasures of heaven may the same grace spread the joy and peace of our redeemer throughout the earth to you our god eternally blessed be glory and praise forever for the final blessing, I want to wish each one of you a very grace-filled Holy Week. We'll pray for each other. I'll pray for you to pray for me. I want to thank all those who helped in the service, uh, the little altar service. I want to thank very specially the choir for the very devotional singing. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, the Father of mercies, who has given you an example of love in the passion of his only begotten Son, grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessings. Amen. so that you may receive the reward of everlasting life from him through whom earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death Amen. and by following the example of his self-abasement may you possess a share in the lord's resurrection Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. I want to especially wish all those who are participating in this Mass via YouTube. Wish you a grace-filled Holy Week. We we'll pray for each other. Kindly join us in the recessional hymn, Hosanna, Blessed is He.